Hi everyone. Good morning. Thank you. It's exciting. We're uh, five minutes from, uh, or maybe 15 minutes from our first session at the Games for Change Festival. I'm the co-president with Michelle Bird. Um, really excited to welcome you to, to the event that is going to go through three days. Um, and let's talk about this day. If someone uh, would have told me like five years ago, and I'm in this space almost a decade, that we, we're going to have this federal gaming group, so kind of federal agencies are going to come together, bipartisan, and speak about games and how um, to leverage investment and share knowledge, and that we'll have a senior, a senior policy advisor uh, at the White House dedicated to games, I would have said that it's science fiction. <laughs> so I think that this is, this is another one of those moments or another testament to the growth of this space and how serious we're becoming. Um, and uh, when we spoke with the Constance Squire in January, um, we heard about the intention to do this convening in June. And we came with a very simple idea. We said, why not move it to the Games for Change Festival? Why not take it to a wider context where federal agencies, funders, researchers, game makers can meet together and exchange ideas? And this is what we have here, and it's great to see the, the full room. So without further ado, Constance Squire, the real force behind this from the White House. Thank you. Well, good morning, and I have to say I'm totally amazed and uh, humbled that so many people showed up today. So thank you from the very bottom of my heart. I really shouldn't care co carry coffee up to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't want to trust me with coffee up to the podium. It's not a good thing. So good morning. I, I want to make sure that first I thank both Michelle and Ozzy. You guys do an amazing event, amazing. And it was such an incredible opportunity for us to be able to partner our group in D.C with this event because I know the talent that comes here, so I really want to thank you for that opportunity. I also want to be sure and thank Susan Gold, who's sitting right here. Without her work on this, this never would have happened. You know, the White House, my office is the Office of Science and Technology Policy. We're really good at steering, but not as good at oaring. We simply can't always be the people who make things happen, and without those doers, uh, we can't get very far. So, Susan Gold, I will just worship the ground you walk on forever. So let's get into business. Um, I want to say first and form foremost, I'll do a couple slides because I want you to know who we are. Um, but this event is to start networking our communities. So when I first took this position in the White House to work on games, number one, I couldn't believe they were creating it. And once I was convinced that it was actually real that they were creating it, the first thing I did was go out on a big listening tour across agencies to talk to people who were doing games to find out what were they doing, what were their frustrations, what was working well, what did it look like. And that listening tour went on week after week after week until I just got too tired to keep walking around all the agencies and we decided to pull a group together. So this has been the culmination of that group and I'll give you a few details on what it looks like internally. All right, so White House interest in games. As interesting and as sort of surprising as that may seem for some of us, in fact, there are roots for where this comes from. Um, back at a 2011 event at Tech Boston, the president himself said he was calling for investments in educational software that's as compelling as the best video game, remarking, I want you guys to be stuck on a game that's teaching you something other than blowing something up. Before that, we had Michelle Obama, who has repeatedly messaged around the use of DDR and other titles among the first family at Camp David and thinking about how to get young people moving, right? So that has been going on for some time, including, for example, you know, um, their, healthy app, their, healthy, their Apps for Healthy Kids Challenge. So this was a small challenge they ran to think about how can you get young people not just playing games, but creating games that would be great for nutrition. Right? So there are some seeds that we start to see if we go back a couple years about where this Games for, Health, uh, games for, for Impact comes from. Of course, there's this image. I don't know if you're paying attention this Christmas, but it's one of my favorite pictures because that, although my slides are dim in here, that is Just Dance, a straight up commercial titer that is incredibly fun. And that would be the president buying it 
in public, right there, right there we've got it. Amazing, isn't it? Now, if you think about, in more serious terms, if you think about Obama's innovation strategy, video games have a clear place, not just in one section of that strategy, but in multiple levels of that strategy. Now, my office is the Office of Science and Technology Policy. So I work under Dr. John Holdren, who's the man you see walking with the president. And our role is to advise on all matters related to science and technology. To give you an idea of scope, our office has four divisions, science, technology, environment and energy, and national security. Within the first six weeks of joining uh, their office, I worked across all of those divisions, including the director's office. So the role of games in all of these national agendas and these high priority areas is across all of them, which is part of the reason that we needed this group. All right, so what make games particularly interesting? I don't need to tell you, but I will tell you what makes it interesting to my boss. Here's a couple facts. So 72% of American households and that number is only rising. The market saturation for games and its incredible increase as a technology sector alone makes us a very interesting technology. Of course, on top of that, we know that video games are a push technology that go out into the home and as a strategy for thinking about how to add reach to a particular idea or problem or solution um, is very provocative. So whereas in paper type analog, I stole this from David Rajeski, by the way, who's a really wonderful and smart man. But if you think about uh, the reach for getting materials out to people uh, in, a, in an analog format, the more people you want to reach, the higher your cost. In digital type strategies, that is an inverse. So with a game, we all know, you have to get a massive investment up front, or at least a reasonable one, to create a good game and show it has impact. But after that, the number of people that play does not need to cost you in, like a linear sort of relationship with, ca with cash, which is very good. Now, obviously I don't know how to work a PC fairly well, um, but <laughs> the last slide was uh, impact on cognition and behavior, which part of what this conference is about. But another point I want to make is about A-B testing. One of the um, promises of something like games is actually not the games themselves, but the digital exhaust that they actually put out. So thinking about the data that comes off of games, games which by most measures are a very, very good marriage between learning and assessment, which is very hard to do in any other, any other area and through any other medium. So A-B testing is really where you can start to think about doing large-scale trials of comparing different formats and comparing different strategies, comparing different game mechanics and pieces of curricula in a way that you can start to make leverage on how are they best suited for audiences. So number one, you're in this constant refinement thanks to A-B testing based on those data exhaust. But number two, you can start to think about personalizing stuff like learning or personalize some personalizing someone's health regime, which is magnificent and offers a huge opportunity there. A few details about this guild. So I told you a little bit of the history of this particular group. In my work, part of my charge is to build partnerships to think about how do you create an ecosystem for innovation that would allow Games for Impact to flourish. And that really includes four primary stakeholders. This isn't everyone, but this is a huge swath of who I deal with. I deal with federal agencies and thinking about what is the role of federal dollars and federal resources in this space. I, uh, I, I work with an academic consortium, so a group of universities with programs, including ones like NYU's. So programs that are, have significant uh, work going on in Games for Impact. Games industry, of course, there's tremendous talent. And surprisingly, in the last 18 months, there is also tremendous interest from people in industry for starting to tackle games with impact beyond entertainment. And fourth, philanthropy. So within these sort of four main groups that I work with, federal agency is just one. Now this Federal Games Guild, we first convened in November. As I said, I got tired of doing a walking tour. And at that time, I set aside a White House um, conference center room. We could fit about 70 people in the room, and we filled it to capacity had about 23 agencies represented. We were very excited. Our last count officially 
was 156 people. Actually, that number is now over 170, representing 33 agencies and four White House offices. And all of this represents investments in games that are already being made. Either they were designed to be investments in games by the way they were written, or they were a, a call for solicitation or an investment designed for a treatment on X. Let's say decrease heart disease or increase uh, or, or uh, increase scientific understanding in a particular area. And it turned out that games were the selected best um, proposal that, that got the money, right? So it's both bottom up and top down. But this group has been expanding, extremely active. Um, they, you know, federal agents, just like the rest of you probably, are overworked and underpaid. And they're great civil servants who put in tremendous energy into trying to solve the problems that their agency focuses on. This group, in addition to the work that they do, convenes once a month to tackle hard problems. And I make them do things like plan conferences. So this is a very mobile and active group. Its actual profile, here's an idea of who right now our membership happens to be. But of course, the top three groups are what you might imagine, military, health, and education. That's both a reflection on the work that this community has done, like Games for Change, but also a reflection on probably the budget size across government generally, right? So our, our general budgets tend <coughs> higher toward, obviously, health and military. As of, I don't know, two months ago, we now have some internal tools like Google Groups to think about organizing ourselves thanks to the agency NOAA and Eric, Eric Hackathorn's work. Is Eric Hackathorn here? I haven't seen him yet. Okay. I just want to say he's just been amazing. Um, and we're also working with the Joan Gantz Cooney Center at Sesame Workshop to, uh, we will be helping them fill out basically a grant tracker so that we can start making it clear to audiences like you what kind of investments are coming out and where you can go find more information on them. So part of trying to reach out means making our stuff more transparent, which is not, a, not an easy task. Just recently, we're starting to work with the Science and Entertainment Exchange. If you're not familiar with this, go check it out. It's pretty amazing. Um, this is through the National Academies of Science, but it's the place in which our content experts across agencies can actually bring their content expertise to outside entertainment titles and vice versa. So that's another opportunity for us to connect and build partnerships. But here are some that I would emphasize that today, if we can start just putting in the seeds for growing some of this, I would consider this day a massive success. So as far as opportunities for external partners, <clears throat> networking, networking, networking. One of the first things that this working group asked me to do was build out their network of external partners. And having a day where we would get out of DC and out of conversation with only the people who are in DC or understand the DC procurement structure was part of what we wanted to do. And so today is part of, of making that happen. Um, but you know, there are lots of ways we can partner. And this really is, from the White House administration's position, is that this is an all hands on deck moment in history, <coughs> right? It's, it's not okay to sit on the sidelines and talk about what's wrong. We need help in figuring out how to do this um, with the community of people who are experts. So my <coughs> plea to you would be to engage with us doing peer review, helping consult as, an, as a content expert, whether it's on a game level design or a mechanic or on a particular game engine or on a content area, helping us figure out what are the best ways to do those kind of grant procurements and solicitations. What should we be thinking about when we put those calls out? And how do we know when they're successful or not? You guys have that understanding, so help us do that. And finally, just reciprocity. Um, one thing I'll emphasize today is that we have a lunch where can all of our federal, my federal folk, can you put your hands, oh, do me a favor, just stand up really quick. So each of these members will be sort of guiding hopefully a group out to lunch to have a conversation on topics that they're interested in. Um, I will end here, but I will say this. So I come from academics, and one thing that I've learned over the last year of working within the federal government is that the agencies have some fairly good ideas about national challenges that are crucial for us to solve. And those agencies are filled with content experts who care very deeply about those problems. So for example, uh, you know, childhood obesity. 
And they not only have, not only do they care about the problems, but they actually know which framing of that problem has the most impact. So let's, let's take children's obesity. So you could design a game on, I used this earlier, you could design a game on, for example, drinking eight glasses of water a day. And that's good for your health. That's good. But the truth is that the real lever, as known within the agencies, would be something like get a kid to get 60 minutes of play a day, 60 active minutes, and suddenly your effect goes through the roof. So agencies actually have not only incredible momentum and investment behind solving some of these hard problems, but they actually know quite a bit about how the problem needs to be framed, how the impact needs to be framed for us to really get some leverage on it. So one thing I would really strongly um, ask and plea for you to connect with is thinking about how to help us solve some of those problems that the agencies are tackling. Because they're the same problems that this group cares about. Civic engagement, the health of our community, revitalizing our democracy, right? Engaging the unengaged, thinking about science literacy as a new form of civic understanding. These are all topics that agencies care about. But if we can start to build that network, I think we can make a lot more traction.